All right. Good morning, everybody. Yep, looks like I'm live. All right, good morning. My name is Samantha Mirabal, and I'm with Melco's application team, and this is our design shop talk that we do every week. I am on the wrong screen. There we go. So this is where we do our design, where we talk about questions you might have with design shop and try to get them answered on a regular basis. So if you have anything, be sure to type in your questions. Um, if I'm looking off to the side, that's what I'm looking at. See if any questions came in. As they scroll, I can only see about four. So it's I got to keep an eye on them, otherwise I miss them. Um, I did I did go ahead and get a few questions ahead of time, so I'll start with those. And again, type them in. And remember, if you think of something after the fact, that's okay. Type it in either on this whatever the prior week's um, design shop talk was, or even email it to applications at milco.com. All right, so what questions do we have for the week? So I've got a question that says, is there a good way to get auto underlay for field design so we don't have to make two elements and combine? So I think what you're asking is like, if you have a full design with, you know, multicolored, it's gonna do a bunch of different steps. Is there a way to do like a global underlay under the whole thing so that you can then avoid having to um, basically improve the quality of the single item being sewn. If that's the case, then no, there's no easy way to do that short of tracing it. And what I mean by that, let me show you. So you don't have to combine, you can do it this way. So if I go and open up, let's say, I'm just gonna go pick one of the designs that come with the software. So, I don't know, these boats, let's do that. Say I open up the boats and what you want is a fill under all this fill, right? So you don't wanna have to do it one at a time. So what you can do is go into your complex fill and zoom in, whatever you need to do to make it somewhat consistent. Choose the complex fill, and then you can just trace around. So let's say I want to just do it under these sails, over to here, down under the boat. Okay. The other way is you take all these, combine them into a single color you know, and just keep merging them together until it's a single element. So if it, Rachel, is, I know you asked this question, is this what you were referring to? Oh, I see another one. Good morning. I just did a project that had me using TTF and expanding to four inches tall. Um, what would be the best setting on my Bravo to get results? Okay, we'll go over that in a little, in a second. So back, just finishing this one up, all I'm doing is tracing around the shape using left clicks and right clicks to create my fill, okay? And I'm going near the edge, not right at the edge, because generally speaking, you don't want your underlay sticking out from under a shape. Good morning. Okay, so I just want, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and go up here. And now I'll hit enter to close the shape, give it a start point, oops. I have no holes, I'll give it a start point and a stop point, stitch direction. Good morning. Obviously, I don't want my start and stop there, but now I have a single fill that goes under all of that. And then I can change it to one, let's be at the start of the design. So I left click and drag it up. So that puts it at the beginning. And if I turn that off, I obviously don't want it filled that much because its purpose is to be an underlay. So in those cases, you know, you'd make your density something larger, whatever is appropriate for the fabric you're working on. And you can also turn off the auto down here Make the border margin zero, so it goes to the edge. Turn that one off, make this one 90, and make the density the same. There. Now I've got an underlay. That's like a global underlay. It goes under the whole thing. So I don't know if that's what you're asking. Um, there is no select an entire design like this. There's no select this design and poof. Now there's an, a single underlay. Okay. Oh. Down in the keys. Good morning. All right, so there was that was that one. So there was a question on using true type fonts, making it really tall. How do I get it to sew out well? Well, first off, that's going to be in your digitizing, right? So when you're creating your text, you want to make sure it looks good on the screen. So not all true type fonts work. Um, when true type fonts are computer fonts, right? So there's a whole lot of them out here. Um, let's say I want to use I don't know, pick one. I don't like that one. It's ugly. All right, too many choices. I'm just going to pick one. <laughs> All right, Sam. Say we're going to do that. 
and we want it to be four inches tall or four inch font so pretty darn big that is if I want it to be exactly four inches tall I can change that down here so you can see it's four inches tall 9.8 wide pretty big well then I would turn on the um, show 3d stitches just so we can look at it and see how it is we want to sew it um, depending on what settings you have it's going to you'll either like it or not like it just looking at this I wouldn't sew this right away I'd want to make some changes all right so what changes would those be well first off let me close all this and so I don't I tend to jump straight into it because I know where they are but let me go from the beginning all right so I clicked this button to center the design all right that way it's centered on X and Y when you turn on your hoop it's now centered in the hoop obviously this is not the hoop I'm gonna want to go sew in all right so looking at this how will we fix it up to make it so right well it's really a personal preference how do you want it to look right so different things you can play with come into your top stitching and you can see it's got a rad random pattern through here well instead of random maybe try auto split and see if you like that any better I like auto split a lot I just like the look of it again it's a personal preference but I think it's pretty so you can do auto splits and that changes how the stitches look um, you can even do if I leave that at let's say default and then come down here since this is so large that's why you're getting all this fill in here because you're not gonna want a let me measure it it's gonna be huge yeah you're not gonna want a 0.6 inch so nearly half an inch piece of thread that's a satin stitch because that's gonna be prone to um, issues with snagging and whatnot all right so instead we can come down here and let's maybe you like this so we can apply a pattern to it whenever you use these best thing you can do is come change it to satin afterwards they look cleaner still that doesn't work in these areas the stitches are still real long but um, it's different look so you can play with all those different patterns to see if you can find one you like I tend to personally go to the um, uh, go over to the uh, auto split just because I like it it's just visually appealing to me so whatever you like best you would go ahead and set this all up make sure you have underlay when you're dealing with really big things underlay becomes important right well I guess underlay is important regardless not just with big things but especially when you're doing a lot of fill like this stuff's gonna want to move around so you need to make sure you compensate for that by hooping well by making sure you have appropriate underlay right so Depending, what you don't want is this, right? You don't want to have your um, no underlay because when it goes to sew out, it's just going to start sewing. And depending on where starts and stops are, fabric's going to pull, shift, you might have puckers, all kinds of effects that you yeah, really don't want, right? So, underlay, you can use auto. If you don't know what auto does, check it out. Right over here, there's a box with three dots. If you click on the box with the three dots, that will bring up another screen that will show you exactly what your auto is doing for you and let's say you decide you like something else for auto okay so how you read this is my range from 0 to 20 points so for something that doesn't exist to um, pretty small right 20 points 0.2 millimeters however you want to look at it or sorry 2 mill, two millimeters whatever 20 points I like points um, you would have a center walk and that's what it would put for things that are 20 points or less because you can't really fit a whole lot under there anyway so a center walks a good call well when you go to slightly bigger but not really getting into wide satins yet or wide stitches you would have an edge walk because a center walks too far away from the edge to actually do you any good um, from a stabilization point of view so you go do an edge walk edge walks also clean up your edges and then you know from 40 to 60 points a zigzag and then an edge walk how the primary underlay is going to sew first then your secondary if you have one and then it will go into your top stitching all right and then when you get into big stuff I like this one it's a cross hatch pattern that goes underneath stuff um, that's what this these settings do for you it puts like a you know cross hatch underneath your items as the underlay so it works really nicely okay so that's how you would read this but so if you haven't played with auto or let, let's say you have your own settings you like let's say you want you know a fill underlay 
whatever it is. You can set them up here or you can just default to using auto. All right, and that will get you set up pretty decently. Pull compensation, don't forget about that. Um, things shrink and move around. So you can always, when you're dealing with big stuff like this, it's, I don't find it as important, but um, stuff is going to move so you can always, or shrink some, so you can always compensate it with some offset. Um, under your tie-in and tie-offs, make sure you have knots. There, I like calling them knots and everyone else calls them tie-in and tie-offs, so I apologize for the nomenclature. To me, a knot makes sense. Tie two threads together and make a knot. That's the reason I, I kind of default to that. But um, you want to make sure you have a tie-in when the machine starts. That way you're just not dragging thread around. It actually locks the, th the stitches together. And the same thing at the end. Make sure you have a lock stitch. Now, when you actually take this to your machine, I think your original question, now that I got side <laughs> got side lined on settings um, is how do I make it so nicely make sure you hoop it well hooping is going to be really important with big with big things um, make sure you also have um, what's it called sorry I just need to fix that all right so make sure you hoop it well make sure you use a topper particularly if you're sewing on a towel or something like that anything with nap put a topper on it that's going to stop the nap from wanting to creep into it if it has a a very high texture around it you may want to do what a lot of people tend to call a knockdown it's basically an underlay that kind of is larger than your shape so that when you sew it out the fur or the fuzz of your garment won't wrap around it and eat it okay so there is another one another one got typed in hi if I have an arched lettering and I want the letter straight not curved to the left straight not curved to the left one one side and the other side tipped the other way so you want an s did that help um hopefully it did michael or big ma okay let's see brenda i'm not sure i understand if i have arch lettering and i want the letter straight not curved one side so I, you want the lettering in an s format kind of like a loop and then a loop okay so let's see Actually, let me start closing things before I lose track of what I'm doing. All right. So, name one. So, I guess what, maybe I'm misunderstanding. I think what you want is something like this, where I've got name one and name two, or whatever, text one, text two. And you want to give them both arches. So I'm going to make them both arches. But instead of it looking like this, you want that one to be flipped over, right? So if I flip it over and I move it down and then I change it from clockwise to counterclockwise, oh, I didn't flip it twice. Oops. Let me do that. There. Okay. So that will do it. Is that what you were looking for? Oh, yeah, or transform outline. Yeah, that's the other way. Okay, I guess I was, I'm not sure what, what it is you're looking to actually do. If you're trying, trying to make things wave, you can either use, you know, set them up this way or the transform outline. I can set it to straight. Delete. Object, transform outline. Now you can mess with both sides of this. So let's say I put a point and a point. Mm, yeah, let's do it like that. Okay, so I can pull this one down, hold my control key and get it to be an arch, control key to be an arch, same with this one, control key, move it up. Oops, helps if I actually hold control, huh? <laughs> All right, is that what you're looking to do? Where you can make it kind of wave shape okay all right I'll keep an eye out all right so another question was if I have a trim if a trim results in thread pulling out of the needle what's the most likely cause okay so what machine model because it kind of depends on what type of trimming system you have. On the EMT's, um, EMT-16s and EMT-16 pluses, 
So on those, check your minimum preset. Make sure you don't have it um, super tight or anything like that. Okay, so you would check that. You would also make sure your trimmer area is nice and clean. So what is your trimmer area? That's the hook area. That's where your bobbin goes in. You'd want to make sure you take that out, clean it really well, um, make sure it's oiled, that you don't have a lot of fuzz, that your cutter, which is the part on the right side of the hook, isn't actually bent. If it's bent or cracked, you're going to have issues. Um, you would also want to look at your bobbin tension, right? Make sure your bobbin tension is right. Most of the time, it's... I would say it's more related to making sure you have everything set right with your settings on the machine and your bobbin tension. Um, but that's where I would start at looking. Okay. All right. So I'll wait for more questions to come in. Until then, let's go back to these. All right. So I did that one. Um, best recommended stitch length for finer text underlay of small graphics. Um, okay, I've got that in another slide, so let me quick jump. All right, let's do monograms real quick, and then I'll jump over to that. Uh, the question just came in. Let me read it before I lose it. Can there be a way to make elements automatically connect to the closest point from one to another? Yeah, if you put the start and stop point outside of the, the frame, so you know the wireframe box when like if you select the box all right so if I have the start over here and the stop over here outside of it it's going to pick the closest points to the previous item so where the X is it'll automatically find their closest point okay so the monogram thing so the question was if I have all right that's not how my monogram is supposed to be but oh well Oh, okay. I'll come back to that. All right, so STM. Let's say that's my monogram. Over here, there's a monogram tab. So the question was, well, how do I use this? Okay. Well, if you turn, this, what this is for is to allow you to turn any font into a proper monogram. And I use air quotes because monograms are whatever you want them to be. Um, if you want the middle letter, what you often see is the middle letter larger and the side letter smaller, right? So you can set the heights of them here. You can set the densities of each letter differently. So you can do a lot within here, okay? Um, if you want to adjust the spacing, you can always move them by selecting the box, the little black X on there, and dragging them around, all right? Now, what if you don't want them that high? What if you want them lower? Well, if I select the letter and drag, notice it's locking it to X. It's locking it in Y. Well, to get rid of that, hold your control key and that'll now let you move it up and down as well. So let's say you wanted to move this one lower, move it over and same with the other one. So all the monogram tab is doing for you is it's letting you set the heights of each letter independently and the densities of each letter independently so that now you can use any font to play with. Okay, so it's if you turn that on, it just gives you properties by letter. All right. Now, you can do that stuff manually as well, right? By This is just a easy, an easy way to do it. So let's say I had this, and I wanted my S really large. Well, I could turn on the monogram thing, but what if my name, what if I just want to make it larger? Well, I can select that letter with the black box, with the black handles. That's my scale mode. So now I can scale it, I can squish it, I can do, if I click on it again, I can rotate it. So I can do all kinds of silly stuff with it. And then let's say I want to move it off the baseline. Again, I can hold the control key, left click and drag. So you can see I've made quite the mess here. Let me delete it. Okay. All right, what else do we have? I still kind of come back to that one. These were ones that were emailed in. How do I make a bean stitch sew? Or how do I make a bean stitch and how do I make it sew? It's not going to the machine. All right. And the other is I cannot get the corners to cap. Help. Okay. So let's look at bean stitch because it's simple. So a bean stitch is a stitch that does 
multiple pieces of thread over the same section. So for instance, a bean would go forward, back, forward, if it's a bean of three. So I'm gonna draw a line. Right now it's set, and I did that by using walk input method. Left click, I held alternate key to keep it straight. Left click again, then hit enter. Now I have a walk normal. All right. If I want to change that to a bean, I would select it and then change it to a bean stitch. I could have done that ahead of time before I actually clicked on the screen, set it to bean. Left click, left click. There we go. You'll notice they pretty much look identical on the screen, right? Um, if I'm really being technical about it, this one's slightly thicker than that, but I don't know. My eyes don't usually work that well, so it's hard to see. So, but you just... With the settings, it's a bean of three. So what does three mean? It means every time it makes a stitch, it's gonna go forward, back, forward. So let's zoom in and look at that if I turn this on. So what it will do is it'll go stitch one, stitch two, stitch three. Forward, back, forward, forward, back, forward, forward, back, forward. So you get three points, three pieces of stitch thread at each location, okay? You can also change that to five. So a bean of five, it's going to give you one, two, three, four, five, and then it will go on. What is that by? It, you know, thread is thin. So if you're trying to do outlines on things um, and you're using one piece of thread, it's going to look kind of thin, right? So to make it look bolder, you know, imagine if you're coloring with a really fine point pencil. Well, you either go over it a few times, right, to make it appear darker. And that's what you're doing here. So you're going to go over it multiple times to make it more detailed without adding the bulk that a satin stitch does, right? So a satin stitch has to be pretty wide. This can look bold, but still be re incredibly thin. So if you've not seen them in use, go look at on your C drive when you install everything, there is a um, designs folder. Look at the one day design. All the outlines around the pear, the bird, details, all of that is a bean stitch, a combo of bean stitches and walk normals. So you can see how those actually work. Okay. All right, so that makes a bean stitch. Now, how do you get it sent to the machine? Well, you finish digitizing your design, whatever it might be. So if I wanted to sew these three lines out for whatever reason, I could go file machine load design and send it to my machine or if you've got a Bravo, um, load design doesn't work, so you'd have to do a save as, save it as an OFM, uh, whatever you want, DST, XP, PS, uh, whatever format makes you happy. Saving it as OFM will keep the wireframe so you can edit it and keep the data. So let's say you want to, you decide you like your design, but those stitches are too small, you want them larger. Well, okay, you can come over here and change the stitch length, making the stitches longer between, so it's, you know, more defined like a quilted look, if you will. All right, <clears throat> so that's a bean stitch. Um, I cannot make the corners cap help. So that one actually, they sent in the file, so I'm gonna open that. Hopefully that's okay. I guess I should have asked. All right, so the question is, hey, I got this. This corner, I want it to cap. I don't want it sewing like this around because it's gonna look better if it were capped. All right, so how do I do that? Well. When I go in here and I set corners, look, I have it set, but it's not working. You know, it's not giving me a cap, and the cap is what I want. Well, right here, it's telling you an angle. What is that angle saying is it's going to cap it based on that angle. So notice if I change that angle up to larger, now it's going to cap angles smaller than that. Right? So now I get the cap on there. Um, be aware when you're doing that, you may want to adjust your pull compensation um, accordingly just because those small stitches um, you, but then you can get a cap on there so now you see that's capped um, same with this one down here it was the same question it's hey I've got this it's cute but I can't cap it all right so properties go into corners and you can adjust the angle to get your cap to show up here and I personally would add a little pull compensation uh, but that I would say that's a personal new uh, personal preference. You'll find everyone likes doing things a little different. Okay. All right. So that changes these for you into nice caps rather than that where it's sewing around and putting a whole lot of stitching in one area, which is going to be problematic. Okay. 
So we did bean stitches, so now it's small stitch, small lettering, I believe. It's the next on my list because I don't see anything. Oh, one got typed in before I lose it. How do you grab points across from each other in designs to move the entire side at one time without moving in each point of that side individually? Okay, so make sure I understand the question. Let's go back here. Let's say, I think what you're asking is, hey, I've got a design, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. Whatever, I have, I have a shape, pretty ugly one, sorry. And you want to move that point and that point and keep them, you just want to move them. Well, I can select this one, I can hold my control key and select the other, now they're both black, then I can left click on them both and move them. All right, so they move as a unit. Um, if you are instead wanting to draw, you know, let's say you want to select that entire side, not just those two points, but all five, well, control is kind of slow, right? I can do it, but now they're all selected, so then I can move them all at once. But rather than doing that, let's do it this way. I can select the shape you want to modify. Right here, you would click on custom point selection. All right, and then you draw a circle around the points you want to select. And now hit enter, there they are. Um, if you don't, let's say you want these four and not that top one, okay, I just circle around those four. Leave the top one alone, okay? And now I click on one of them and just left click and drag to move it. Okay. So I think that's, or maybe you were asking how to move these two. Again, it's the same thing. You'd select each point by holding your control key or by using this custom point selection. Okay. We'll left click and drag. Is there a way to save colors with the design EMT 16 sending to machine from Bernina V8? Yes, there's a way to save colors with the design. I have no idea how to do it from Bernina V8. I only know how to do it from Design Shop. Um, in Design Shop, you would set the colors, save it as OFM, and then um, the OFM file holds the color data for you. So when you load it on the machine, it comes with that. Um, I'm not sure how it works with V8. I can try to find the issue for, um, I can try to find out for you from, I'll ask around, see if anyone has the software. Um, I don't have it, so I, unfortunately, I, I don't know. Um, I'll get with the guys, though, and see if we can get you an answer. All right. Um, in general, let me just say, formats that save color data are going to be HUS, JEF, um, VIP, VP3, I think, saves color data, although it doesn't work on our machine, so who cares. Um, so Jeff, Hus, OFM, I know EMB files also save color data. So those are kind of the ones that if you want a file to have the chance of saving the color, so maybe maybe try that from Bernina, um, save it off as a Jeff file or a Hus file and load that and see if the data that you want comes across. That might be what I would try because I know those formats save color data. Okay. Um, the last question I had was this one. Best recommended stitch length for finer text underlay of small graphics. All right. So small graphics, oops, that's not my pretty one. It's not big. Hmm. There, that one's big. Sorry, I got to make it where I can see questions again. Every time I do this, it, yeah. Oh, that's right. PES, PES files also save off the color data. All right, so finer details. For underlay, um, when you're the biggest thing where you're dealing with really small stuff is you want to make sure your underlay is not peeking out from around curves and corners and things, right? So here, if you're going to do a walk normal, um, you would do that. I like using around 15 points. Keep in mind, a regular needles around seven points in size. So the closer you get to that, the more likely you're just going to be stabbing things over and over, right? So you know, thir 13 to 15. Ah, there you go. Noko, whoever's on the other line, other end there, they typed in art format should carry the colors with it for you. Okay. Um, 
anyway, your walk normal for your underlay, when, particularly when you're doing small things. I like using um, your stitch length of about 15 points, and that's from needle penetration to needle penetration and using curve compensation myself. That way it'll get closer together along curves. You just got to be careful that you're not overdoing it so you have um, stitches, you know, your needle pen, your wireframe points so close together that now you've got stitches that are way too short to sew. Okay, so that would be kind of the only precaution. Make sure you're not zoomed in so close that you're putting a million um, wireframe clicks because if you do that everywhere you have a wireframe click you're gonna have a stitch and if they're right on top of each other that's no good all right so I like you know around 13 to 15 points I tend to go closer to the 15 I'm um, a style one tie-in is best there are settings that are recommended over here based on size of thread you can reference those and then based on your size of thread you're also going to play with your um, the density is a little bit different. If you're using 40 weight thread, you're going to use um, a higher density because it's so small. If you try to do a really small density in that area, you're going to end up, it's kind of like culling with a Sharpie in a quarter inch box. You're going to end up with a big mess, right? Whereas <laughs> if you reduce the thread, now I can cutler in my quarter inch box with, you know, a fine point needle, okay, or a fine point pencil to color in so I now have ability to go smaller by using smaller threads okay so I put those here for you and other good resources I, I keep on I know probably people are tired of me pointing to it but Scott did a really good video on small lettering highly recommend watching it it's over on YouTube it's about 45 minutes you can get to it by going to the um, going to this thing all right so go to shop mount or milco dash service i did this last time if you go to the where the faq is you can find here it'll take you right to the lesson all right any other questions we have i don't see any others typed in I'll wait a sec, see if anyone else decides to add questions. Other than that, let's, let me quick make a double check. Talked about that, talked about that, that and that, and that. Okay. Well, I hope everyone's ready for the holiday. <laughs> I know I'm not done sewing yet, so that's fun. <laughs> We're still sewing. Got our machines all running right now. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful holiday. Um, I haven't talked to Melco to see if they want me to do this next week. I assume they do, but I'll get with them. So I don't know if we're doing it next week. Yay. If not, I'll see you after the new year. Um, any other questions? Oh, mad face. All right. I don't see any others typed in. Well, you guys have a great afternoon, and I will talk to you next time. All right. Bye.